How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in this hands-on step-by-step video, I'm going to show you how to install macOS on your Hackintosh using the parts that I've outlined in the description and in a previous video. Here I will cover every single step one by one, so at the very end you'll have a working Hackintosh. Let's check it out. So I just wanted to preface this video with a few words of warning. Number one, I make no guarantees that this is actually going to work for you. Hackintoshes are by nature kind of finicky. Uh, and if you're, you're not experienced in doing this, then it could be very frustrating and very time consuming to get just right. So keep that in mind. Number two, more than likely, everything isn't going to work as well as it would on an actual Mac. Uh, I look at this as more of a stopgap solution until Apple releases real Mac Pros. So keep that in mind. For instance, iTunes movies that I purchased will not play back on this Hackintosh. Now I could probably work around that. So just to reiterate, this probably isn't something you want to use for work. It's more of a hobby thing. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started with the fun stuff. Now for the beginning of this tutorial, you will need a computer running Mac OS already. So you want to open up the Mac app store and download Mac OS Sierra. This is a free download and it's a fairly large download. So depending on your internet speed, it's going to take a while. You can see it's almost five gigabytes. So in this video, you're going to notice a lot of times I've sped things up to get us through this tutorial in a decent amount of time. So once the Mac OS Sierra download is complete, you can just quit the installer. The next step is to open disk utility. You can find it in the other folder. If you open up Launchpad. once disk utility is loaded, plug in your USB drive, make sure there's nothing on the drive that you need and then select the drive. In my case, SanDisk Cruiser Edge Media. Now click the erase button. And then give it a name installer, make sure format and scheme match what I have here and then click erase. Once the erase is complete, click done and then close out of disk utility. Then we want to open up the terminal window, which is also in the other folder. And then you want to paste in this command, which will be in the post on nine to five Mac and then press return and then enter your password and press return. So this command string loads the Mac OS Sierra installer on your USB drive. And this takes a while. So just, just relax and be patient. I've sped this up a lot to get through it, but I'm serious. It really does take a long time. So you have to be patient. All right. So we are done. All right. So the next step you can close out of the terminal window. Okay. So the next step is to head over to the post on nine to five Mac, download the required files, like the bootloader, a couple of kernel extensions and the audio and graphics drivers. Once you download those, you want to save them to a folder called Hackintosh files. That name isn't required, but it helps me to stay organized. So I recommend using that. So you can see my Hackintosh files folder on my desktop here. I'm going to open that up and you can see the five files listed there. So the first thing I'm going to open is the Clover bootloader. So here it is. I'm going to click continue, continue again, change install location. And you want to select your install Mac OS Sierra USB drive that we just created. So make sure you select the right one, click continue, click customize, and then select the first option install for UFI booting only. I call it UFI. Some people call it UEFI, whatever the case may be, just check that first one. And then click the disclosure triangle next to driver 64 UFI, and then select OS 10 Aptio fix drive 64. Now, when your screen looks like this, click install, enter your password, and now we're done. So we have the Clover EFI bootloader installed on the USB drive. In doing this, we'll automatically mount the EFI partition on the USB drive. So now we want to open up that EFI folder on the EFI partition, and then open up where it says Clover, and then open up where it says Kext and then open up 10.12, since that is Mac OS Sierra, open up your Hackintosh files folder, and then drag the two kernel extensions, the Kex files directly to the 10.12 folder. Once that is complete, I recommend going to the installer partition on the USB drive and dragging the Hackintosh files folder to that partition. So click on the installer and then drag the Hackintosh files folder over there for easy access and safekeeping. All right, we're making good progress. So now plug the USB drive that you just created into your Hackintosh and turn it on. When you see the boot logo, you want to press the delete key on your keyboard to load the UFI BIOS. All right. So here we are. 
you want to scroll over using your keyboard over to where it says save and exit and then go down to load optimized defaults press return on your keyboard select yes and press return all right so now we want to go back to where it says peripherals and then you want to go down all the way till you see xhci handoff you want to press return and enable that press return all right now we want to go over to bios features and then we want to press return on the boot option one and then select eufy for your usb drive so in my case sandisk cruiser and then press return now go over to save and exit and then go up to save and exit setup and then press return and then press return all right so now we're going to boot into the clover bootloader now you want to make sure you move your cursor because it will automatically boot whatever is selected if you don't so now we can go over and select where it says boot OS 10 install from install Mac OS Sierra and then press the space bar on your keyboard. This allows you to select boot options. So you want to go down to where it says verbose, press the space bar on your keyboard, then go back up to boot Mac OS with selected options and then press return and get used to all this text that scrolls by. It's going to take a while because we're booting using verbose mode so we can find any errors if there are any. Okay, so it booted up and I should mention you can use Bluetooth keyboards, although it may be better for you to use a hardwired keyboard during the install process. So you want to click next for use English for the main language, unless you speak another language, of course. And then you want to select disk utility and click continue. Once disk utility is loaded, you want to select your hard drive or your SSD inside your Hackintosh. Now make sure you don't select any other drive, but the one you're actually targeting and the one you want to erase. So here is my SanDisk SSD. I'm going to select that, click erase, and I'm going to give it the name Hackintosh HD. All right, make sure everything else looks like this and then click erase. Again, just make sure you erase the right thing and then click done. You can close that out and then select install Mac OS and click continue. Okay, now click the continue button again, click agree, click agree, select your Hackintosh HD and then click install. Okay, so obviously this portion is going to take a while because you're actually installing Mac OS Sierra on your Hackintosh. So I've sped this up so we can get through it, but expect to wait some time. It's gonna automatically reboot. And when Clover appears again, you wanna select boot Mac OS install from Hackintosh HD, highlight that, press the space bar, go down to where it says verbose, press the space bar, and then go up to boot Mac OS with selected options and press return. All right, again, since we're booting in verbose mode, you're going to see all the text there scroll by. And then the Mac OS Sierra install is going to complete. Again, this is time consuming, so be patient. Once done, click the restart button and it's going to restart. And once Clover reappears, you want to select boot Mac OS from Hackintosh HD. You'll notice you also have a recovery partition as well, but we don't want that right now. We want to select boot Mac OS from Hackintosh HD, press the space bar, select verbose again, go back up to boot Mac OS with selected options, press return, and then it's going to reboot and Mac OS should load. All right, so here's our welcome screen, folks. So we can just go through the setup there, make sure you select and connect to your Wi Fi network. That's the nice thing about that Wi Fi card we chose because it just works out of the box. So just go through the setup there. I chose not to log into iCloud at this time. All right, you can see everything unchecked. You can pause it if you want to see everything in detail there, but basically just breezing through the setup. All right, so it's going to identify the keyboard. Just follow the on-screen instructions. All right, so we want to open up our install Mac OS Sierra USB drive and those Hackintosh files that we put there earlier. Yeah, we need those. So the first thing we want to do is open up Clover again because we want to install the Clover bootloader on our Hackintosh drive so that it can boot independently of the USB drive. So we wanna do the exact same thing that we did last time, except this time, select Hackintosh HD as the install location, click customize, select install for UFI booting only, click the disclosure triangle next to driver 64 UFI, and then select this option here, OS 10, aptio fix drive dash 64, and then click install. Put in your password and then click install software. Okay, installation is complete. Click close, and then you'll see that EFI partition that is automatically mounted. So we can click on that EFI partition. We're gonna open up a new window first though. Select EFI, open up the EFI folder, open up Clover, open up Kext, open up 10.12, and 
and then drag the two kernel extensions over to that folder. All right, see that Hackintosh files folder is coming in handy, isn't it? So the next thing we want to install is our audio driver. So double click on Voodoo HDA, click continue, click continue, install, put in your password, you know the drill. All right, so it's going to validate, click close. Now we want to install the NVIDIA web driver. This works for any Pascal based card. So a GTX 1070, 1060, et cetera. So click continue twice, click install, put in your password, click continue installation. It's going to go through and finish the install. All right, now click restart. And then you want to press the delete key on your keyboard. When the gigabyte logo shows up, that opens up the Eufy BIOS again. Since we installed the Clover bootloader on our actual drive inside our Hackintosh, we want to select that drive now for our first boot option. So go down to Eufy OS and you can see my drive there. So select that, then go over to save and exit and then save and exit setup. Now, when it boots up, it's going to boot from the drive inside the Hackintosh instead of the USB drive. So now you can just go over to options, press return. All right, then go down to where it says SM BIOS, press return. And for a product name, change it to iMac 14.2. And for board version, do the same thing. If you don't do this, chances are you'll boot to a black screen. So return to the main page, select the boot Mac OS from Hackintosh HD, press the space bar, select verbose, and then select use NVIDIA web drivers. And then go up to boot Mac OS with selected options and press return. All right, there we go, glorious, right? This is your Hackintosh booted up with drivers installed. Looks great. But we don't want to use those Clover options every single time we want to boot into Mac OS. We want that to be automatic. So to do that, we need to remount the EFI partition and make some changes. So open up terminal and then you want to type in disk util space list and then press return. This will give you a readout of all the disks connected to your machine. So the first disk, Hackintosh HD, is the one we want. You can see that is disk zero, and you can see the EFI partition is slice one. So we want to select disk zero slice one. So you want to type the following in to set a mount point and then press return, put in your password, press return. Okay, so now we can actually mount the EFI partition that's located on the device we identified as being the right one. So disk zero slice one, disk zero slice one. It could be different on your machine, so just verify first and then press return. And now the EFI partition, when you check in Finder, should be mounted and it should be the correct one. Make sure you mount the correct EFI partition uh, whenever you do this, please make sure you mount the right one. All right, so you wanna go into Clover again. You wanna open up this time the config.plist file and we wanna do a Command F and search for boot. Now, what we're gonna do here, you can see there's two arguments and both of those are commented out. You can see that by the little pound sign next to each. We just wanna copy one of those arguments and then press return to make a space and then paste that argument and string right below. We wanna remove the comment and we're gonna place in our own argument. So we wanna keep the dash V and we wanna put in NVDA underscore DRV equals one. This enables the NVIDIA web drivers on boot. So I don't have to do that manually in Clover. All right, the next thing we wanna do is search for board V, board version, and you can see it's commented out. You wanna remove the pound sign. All right, and then replace proto one or whatever else is in there with iMac 14 comma two. And then one more thing, search for product. And you see product name. You can see it too is commented out, remove the pound sign and replace whatever's there with iMac 14 comma two. And then you wanna save this file after you make those changes. So just go up to file and select save and then close it out. You're gonna get a little error message. You can just click okay there, that's fine. All right, so now it's time for the moment of truth. We're gonna reboot and see if the changes actually work. Now, this time when we reboot, we're not gonna press anything. We're gonna let Clover handle everything itself and try to boot automatically using our Hackintosh HD. See it counting down there and see what happens this time. All right, so verbose mode did work. I didn't have to go in and select the V. And look, it booted right up. Awesome. So this works, folks. Now you can just reboot at will and your Hackintosh should load right up. So now let's talk about some of the things that work well. 
If you open up network, you can see that ethernet is enabled. I don't have it connected obviously, but it is enabled. Wi-Fi obviously is enabled. Bluetooth works, AirPods work, audio works, along with my audio interface, the Onyx Blackjack. iCloud works, of course. The App Store works. I'm downloading Final Cut Pro as we speak. AirDrop works because that Wi-Fi card is Bluetooth enabled as well. So I can easily AirDrop files between Macs, iPhones, iPads, etc. What else works here? Oh, there, there's AirDrop again. Okay. All right. Calm down. All right. Let's head over to system information. You can see right now connected via DisplayPort 1920 by 1080, 60 Hertz. It's actually pixel doubled. Uh, so I am running in retina mode. You can see the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti is working perfectly fine. And USB 3.1, 10 gigabits per second is working. I don't have Thunderbolt 3 working yet. Um, I don't have iMessage working. Although I will say that Apple Music works very well, but iTunes movies don't, at least for iTunes in a cloud. I haven't really tested it extensively yet. Some of these things you could probably get working with a little TLC. Uh, like I said, Hackintoshes aren't perfect. They do have issues. For instance, HDMI 2.0 doesn't work but DisplayPort works perfectly fine. You can see I'm loading up Final Cut Pro 10 here, and that works really well. I'm, I'm extremely happy with Final Cut Pro 10. Um, the performance isn't super like extraordinary, but it is solid for sure. And it, it definitely performs better than my MacBook Pro in a lot of cases. Now I showed you a lot of benchmarks in the previous video I did on the Hackintosh, so make sure you do watch that, but you can see that the Heaven benchmark is running pretty well at 1080p. So that's it folks, that is how you install macOS on your Hackintosh. If you appreciate this video, please leave me a thumbs up. It is the best way to let me know that you like this type of content. Also, please subscribe if you have not already to keep this channel going. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.